Welcome to Abacus Tutorials. Today we'll be discussing the crash analysis with the objective of learning how to do an aircraft crash analysis. My name is Vinay Goyal and I have invited uh, Eddie Chen who's going to guide us through this tutorial. So when we're looking at crash worthiness, we're looking at ways to minimizing injuries in the event of a crash. And there are several factors that can really play a big role in uh, the injury of our passengers. And that is, that is excessive uh, acceleration forces, direct trauma from contact with injurious surfaces, and exposure to environmental factors such as fire, things like that. Effective crash worthiness design has to consider all possible sources of injury and eliminate or mitigate as many as practical uh, ways uh, for a given design impact limit. Several areas need to be looked at, for example, the strength of the fuselage, particularly the underside, adequacy of the seats and restraint systems, and adequacy of energy attenuation systems. What we're looking for here is methods that can reduce the amount of energy that gets transmitted to the passenger. If we can find ways of absorbing the energy through the design of the fuselage when the fuselage impacts, then that's going to allow for passengers to survive such an event. And in this tutorial, the goal is really to learn how to do an analysis to simulate a crash worthiness uh, event, a crash event. And that is to assess the crash worthiness. And what I want to show you now is a NASA Langley video of a testing that's typically done to assess the crash worthiness of an aircraft through testing. So let's go and step into the video now. So Pretty good, like the whole uh, Ooh, the whole yeah. seat rail. Well, more of the leg. So. It is impossible to test every crash worth it crash scenario, every crash configuration scenario. And as a consequence, that's where finite element analysis can come into play. And today we're gonna to look at a fusilized model and really determine whether this aircraft can survive, can, can survive a crash event onto soil. And for that, I'm gonna have Eddie Chen guide us through that tutorial now. It's an exciting modeling uh, and it's really worth uh, understanding um, how this modeling can be done. Now, modeling of these kind of scenarios is quite complicated because you have to really determine uh, failure criteria at high speed impacts, for example, 
you have to have a stretch train curves. You, you have to gather data. And if you don't have this data, this analysis may not be as accurate. So, so it's very important to anchor an analysis to set up parameters, and then you can use the analysis to study other configurations that you may not have been able to test. And so for that reason, analysis becomes very valuable in this area of expertise, and I'm very excited for you to go through this today. So let me turn it over to Eddie. Thank you, Eddie, I appreciate your time. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this uh, finite element um, modeling tutorial. We are used uh, Abacus to um, analyze the, the crash of an aircraft. And uh, I'm uh, Guan Chen, or you can call me Eddie. Mm, also, uh, our situation is an aircraft uh, lost its power. And uh, assume that uh, it vertically uh, dropped onto a soil land and uh, we ignore the drag force like from the air or other thing. So the fuel sledge model is from GrabCat and uh, I do a little modification to uh, smaller the whole model. Then, then we'll use this one as our simulation part. So, uh, let's uh, import the part into Abacus file, import part. And uh, choose the STEP file and import the fuel stage. It's 3D deformable and we don't have to change the scale. So uh, you may not see the, you may not see the model, but uh, it's because of uh, here, uh, late. Uh, it import two parts and one of it is empty, but uh, it, uh, we did actually uh, successfully uh, import it into this and it's in fuel stage one. So uh, this is the part of fuel stage, uh, fuel stage we'll use in uh, crash analysis. And then, uh, we also need to import the uh, uh, ground, ground part. Again, uh, file import and uh, choose the ground STP. And also it's a 3D deformable. So uh, same with the fuel stage, uh, it's in ground one, the model. So here's, here's the ground. Next step, uh, go to property. Uh, we're gonna set up uh, a property of our uh, the fuel switch. And uh, it's a AA7075 T6 aluminum. So create a new material and AA7075 T6. So density. And Young's modulus is in mechanical elast elasticity, elastic. Uh, 
these are all the same uh, with the previous uh, project. But one difference here is that after we uh, input Young's modulus and Poisson ratios, uh, we have to input this uh, fail stress because uh, after, uh, if, if in a simulation, uh, the element reach uh, this setting, uh, it will automatically el eliminate that uh, element and uh, make it look like the, the fracture or the um, damage uh, uh, mechanism in the simulation, in the result. And how to, uh, how to aid this is from here. Sub options, uh, fail stress. And here uh, you can input a non isotropic uh, value, but here we just uh, use a simple one input 450. Uh, with the value here, uh, by four, um, 450 for uh, the front five one and the uh, zero for the rest of two, then press OK. And here you got a fail stress. Then the, uh, we also have to input the ductile damage. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, from here, mechanical damage for ductile metals, ductile damage. It's also a way to uh, calculate uh, when to eliminate the element in the simulation. And if you want to change into next row, uh, just press enter. And uh, here uh, we need, uh, we also need to uh, input another value here, uh, damage evaluation. And uh, it's from uh, here, uh, sub option, sub options, uh, damage evaluation. And uh, we want to use the type uh, energy, not displacement. So change the type to energy and uh, value is 10. So here's the uh, ductile damage with damage evaluation. And the, the final step is uh, plastic, mechanical plasticity, plastic. So uh, we have the 70, 75, T6 now. And uh, these are all its uh, mechanical property. And press OK. And uh, in, in this uh, simulation, uh, we want to uh, simulate that uh, it crashed onto a soil. So we also need to input the uh, mechanical property of uh, soil. Oh yeah, and it's more simple because uh, we don't need to uh, know what's the, we don't want to know much about uh, how soil deform or its stress. So we only have to input the density, el elastic, And that's it. So uh, we have the property now, and uh, we'll start to assign the section. So the ne uh, next icon here, create section. And section one is for 
Let's go for first ledge. And uh, it will be a solid homogeneous uh, element. Let's continue. And the material is that uh, 775. Okay. And assign another one for soil. And uh, of soil, uh, because our ground uh, is a planar surface, so it's not a solid, it's a shell. And uh, homogeneous. And we assume that uh, its thickness is 200 millimeters. And the material is uh, soil. And we'll keep uh, other set settings. Okay. Then go back to fill stage and uh, assign section. And uh, click on the fill stage part. And section is the fill stage. Press OK. And uh, here uh, we got another uh, special um, setting here uh, because we, we want to know about damage. And uh, there's uh, uh, some properties uh, related to the orientation of the material. So we have to set the orientation of this part to let the abacus know that uh, how to calculate uh, the loss uh, values. And uh, the icon is here, uh, assign material orientation. And uh, click on the fill switch. And uh, use default, default orientation or the that method. And uh, we'll, uh, this is the same as our global, uh, global uh, access. So uh, yeah, it's uh, because uh, we still input, uh, actually we input uh, iso isotropic uh, material property. So we can use the uh, global orientation. It, it doesn't matter how we assign its orientation. Uh, we just want the uh, calculation to um, start, start properly. So here's press OK. And uh, that's for the fill stage. And then we also have to uh, assign section for, for the ground. Here, uh, assign section, pick the ground. And, and uh, yeah. Pick the soil, and uh, uh, it, uh, here uh, it's called the middle surface. Uh, this means that uh, oh, uh, remember we uh, we defined it as a two hundred millimeter thickness, and uh, if you assign this as uh, its uh, middle surface, it will create an uh, integration point above and below and uh, create the thickness of uh, 200 millimeters in the uh, analysis. And you, but you can also change this to uh, other one, but here we will use the middle surface. And okay. So after I uh, uh, finish the uh, property, uh, two, two material property, uh, then we can uh, 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 assign a reference point for the fuel sledge. Assign a point on the middle part, um, middle top. 
and the then uh, assign the mass. Oh, from here, special inertia and create point mass and uh, pick the uh, reference point we just assigned. And uh, uh, mm, assume uh, here we put a, we exaggerate it, it a little bit. Uh, we, you, uh, we put a 20 tons here uh, so that uh, the crash uh, will mm, be more obvious. But uh, yeah, when you do the simulation, you can input a proper number. And uh, the inertia, we don't need it, but yeah, we can put a one here, here for it to calculate. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, check the material or orientation again. Let's just follow the uh, global axis. Then go to our ground. And again, uh, assign a reference point. Then assign a, a mass. Pick a reference point. Uh, here, because uh, it's a ground, uh, so um, we don't need to care too much about its uh, deformation or its uh, movement. So we put a higher number here and also give a one for inertia. So that's for the property part. Then go to assembly. And uh, I'll uh, pick the fuel sledge three, and then pick the ground one. Oh, sorry. Uh, here you will be a uh, fuel sledge one, not three. And yeah, and then go to the next step. Uh, step. Create step, and oh, it's a crash analysis, and uh, so it will be a dynamic explicit simulation. And because the uh, crash happened uh, really fast, uh, the time period here will use uh, point 0.1, and this one will be on, and all other setting we can keep it. Okay, and here we need to be care. Uh, another uh, here something is different from before. Uh, we need to change the field output from this icon here, field output manager, and double click this. Uh, because uh, you need to uh, the advocates need to know then to calculate the fracture or uh, how they uh, eliminate the element. So they need some data from your simulation. So you need to click some uh, output data here for the for Abacus to do its calculate calculation. And uh, the first one you need to pick is uh, in you expand, expand value or fracture and uh, click on this one, C failure, failure measure components. This is the first one. And then go to the last one, uh, go to the state field user and time and expand it. And here you need to click two of, uh, like two of them. Uh, for, uh, first is the SDV. And the second is status. Yeah, so here you need to uh, click three. 
three um, item, three options. Oh. First is uh, C failure in failure fracture and uh, SDV uh, status uh, in state field user and time. And uh, we uh, increase the interval to 50. Click OK. Then go to the interaction. Uh, so in this analysis, mm, the field that will contact with the ground. So we need to set the contact from this icon here. Create interaction and step from initial or step one. Yeah, for, uh, it's that it doesn't matter. And uh, yes, uh, Abacus has this kind of uh, very convenient setting, uh, general contact. It will automatic, uh, automatically uh, calculate uh, every surface or element uh, count the uh, they will pay, uh, they will uh, assume that uh, uh, you you don't need to pick any surfaces that will contact during a simulation. Uh, you just need to create this, and uh, every surface will automatically um in the contact condition. You uh only. All you need to do is only uh, set the contact property from this icon here. And uh, like the pro uh, like what we did in project, a uh, project to contact and uh, tangential behavior, no normal behavior. And in tangential behavior, we will change this uh, fraction form uh, formulation into penalty and with uh, fr friction of coefficient of 0.3. And uh, normal behavior will uh, stick to stick to this. And okay. So I'll pick a property we just set, then press okay. Then that's all you need to do for the contact. Then we can go to load. First, uh, um, when the aircraft fa falls down, uh, there will be a gravity force on the fuel sledge. So we'll set the gravity first from create load. And the step is in step one. And uh, oh, yeah. the gravity force. And it's on minus minus z direction with the magnitude of nine thousand eight hundred and ten. Uh, and oh, be careful for here. Uh, the region is not the whole model because we don't need to uh, calculate uh, gravity on the floor. So we'll pick the uh, fuel fuel stage only. And yeah, okay. So we have uh, gravity on the fuel switch. Uh, next one, uh, it's a simplifying model. So we ne also need to set up the uh, symmetry on the fuel switch. So create boundary symmetry. And uh, we'll pick uh, these two surface for symmetry. And when you when you are picking multiple uh, surfaces, uh, remember to press the ship. So you can pick them up at, at once. Go to the other end and pick the surfaces again. OK. 
yeah, that's uh, two sides of this fill sledge. So done. And uh, it will be a uh, X symmetry. Okay. And uh, for our uh, ground surface, uh, we also need to uh, pin it, uh, fix it. So create a uh, symmetry again. And this time we'll pick uh, four edges of the of the ground. Uh, if you done. And uh, this one. I think both both should be should work. So. Okay. And the uh, next step is uh, the fill sledge will have velocity when it crash onto the ground. And uh, uh, here, uh, this icon here is a predefined field. Uh, this can uh, give the fill sledge, uh, give applicants uh, the situation of this fill sledge uh, before simulation so yeah click this icon and uh, uh because it's the status the the original status so you will have to go to the initial step and uh, the uh, the velocity is mechanical and pick the velocity and here we'll we'll we will have to pick the whole wheel stitch uh, find a proper angle and uh, pick it. Oh, it's okay if you pick the floor, uh, but uh, the floor has no velocity. We need to cancel it. And uh, you can uh, press control and uh, click on, oh wait uh press control then click on the floor and remember all oh, four edges and the four corners all need to be canceled yeah so this is uh so we we pick the whole fill stitch and uh, give it a, a velocity. Mm, assume it, ha uh, it has uh, 10,000. And uh, the unit here is millimeters per second. Yeah, let's see uh, how, the, uh, how the result will look like. Okay. Yeah, so gravity uh, fix the floor and uh, X symmetry on both sides of fuel stage and then give a pre predefined uh, velocity on the fuel stage. And that, uh, that's all the setting for the log part. Then we can go to mesh. Also, uh, originally it will look like this uh, in the uh, color pink. And the first thing uh, uh, be before mesh, you uh, remember to uh, assign a mesh control first, this icon. And uh, pick the fuel stitch. Uh, for this kind of, uh, complex geometry uh normally we'll use this textural uh element shape and with uh free meshing 
and press OK. So the color will be pink. Then assign the, uh, say the part, I think uh, 80, 80. Let's see how this looks. Yeah. And also, uh, so the thickness of the surface of the fuel stage uh, is small. So normally, uh, if you didn't uh, sit, set the set the seat edges, uh, there will only be uh, one layer of element in the thickness direction and uh, in finite element analysis, uh, usually we, we will like to have uh, more than one layers of element so that the simulation will mm, be more accurate. So remember to um, sit, uh, set the element number on the thickness direction. Yeah, I, I picked it before and uh, pick some uh, pick some lines on the thickness direction, like this, like this, uh, like this line. And uh, here, uh, we want uh, more than one element on the thickness direction. So uh, the method uh, will buy numbers and uh, for uh, two elements and okay. So uh, the, the edges that you assign a different seating setting, uh, will have di different color than the global seating part in the purple color. So yeah, and after this, uh, you can uh, match the part. So, right, uh, we have uh, two layers of element on the thickness direction. That will much better. That will be much better than oh, just one layers. And then uh, after uh, so the uh, fill stage machine is finished, then go to the ground. Oh, not yet. Uh, sorry. Uh, after you ma you match the part. Uh, remember to take a look at the element type here. Hmm. Uh, because this is a explicit uh, analysis and make sure that this uh, option here is on explicit or there will uh, there will uh, an, an arrow will appear when you do the simulation yeah so yeah explicit and go to the ground and uh, see see the part again, we use 80 again. And then mash it. Oh, sorry, uh, before see the part, uh, go to mesh control. Yeah, make sure, uh, because it's very simple uh, geometry. Uh, so the structured, uh, the structured uh, option uh, should be available, and uh, yeah, pick the pick this one. Uh, the, the, we like the structured uh, element the most, and then yeah, the same process. Say the part and uh, 
generate meshes. After this, uh, check the element type. Yeah, uh, here, uh, if you didn't change the setting, it should be on uh, standard. Yeah, and remember to change it to explicit because it's a explicit uh, an analysis. And okay. So then uh, that's all uh, for the setting. Then you can go to a job and create one and uh, start the simulation. So the simulation is done and uh, we can see our result here. And uh, yeah, uh, let's plot it into a uh, animation with the icon here. And uh, we you can also see a stress So you can see uh, on these corners uh, where the stress concentration happened. Uh, and when the fuel that uh, contact with the ground, it first uh, crack happened here first. And uh, it's not really a, mm, a fracture. Uh, in abacus, they just uh, eliminate the element when the mm, when the stress or energy reach uh, the limit of your setting, and uh, also after uh, the corner uh, crack first, then the middle part also cracks, and and. Uh, The frame here, uh, you can also see there's some fracture. Yeah, so it looks pretty successful. And uh, that's all for this uh, crash analysis tutorial. And thank you for watching.